What's going down folks? It's your boy C23 back on the sticks once again with another Madden 17 franchise video for you guys. And a lot of things have happened since the last video I uploaded. So this video might be a little bit longer than you used to just so I can catch everybody up. Now, if you're looking at the box score tab and you're wondering why a score is there to a game that you haven't seen yet, that's because I just played the game and didn't want to show you. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Of course, I wanted to show you guys the game, but I ran into an issue where my capture card, which is an HD PVR 60 for those of you guys that are wondering, simply didn't record the game after I hit the record button. Now, for those of you guys that have HD PVRs, you know what I'm talking about, that little button at the very top of the device. I pressed it down, the capture card lit up red like it usually does when it records. I played the full game, then went back to my computer getting ready to edit, and sure enough, there was no recorded footage. So I apologize to you guys for that, but I can tell you that it was one of those slow, methodical, grinded out type of games. And you can tell just by looking at the box score that neither team really could do much offensively, but we were able to do just enough to squeak out a win by one point and really that's all that matters now i do have some bad news to report and unfortunately it's at a position where we have no depth whatsoever but our starting running back tevin coleman is out for eight games with a broken collarbone you guys so we're definitely gonna have to do something to address that moving forward because like i said there are no running backs on this roster but before we can get to that there's a couple of other decisions that need to be made and like i always do i'm gonna call on the help from all of you madden gms out there to help me figure out what needs to happen here now check this out we've got two pretty big positions where players are up for resigning we've got jake matthews our left tackle and our right tackle ryan schrader now you guys remember what happened last season with ryan schrader and for those of you who don't i basically had to slap him with the franchise tag because he was trying to test free agency and i just wasn't letting one of the best right tackles in the game go out like that so as for our upcoming decision to all of my fellow Madden GMs, what should our move be here? Should we go Schrader or should we go Matthews? Go on ahead and drop me a comment down below and let me know what your thoughts are. Right now, I'm leaning towards Schrader, and this is a little bit of a spoiler alert for a future video, but the reason I'm leaning towards Schrader is because there are a lot of left tackles available coming up in the draft. So I'm expecting that draft pick that we got in the Devontae Freeman trade to be good enough for us to get one of those really elite left tackles. But we'll see how everything plays out. Drop me a comment below and let me know your thoughts. Now, since we've got no other running back on the roster besides Teron Ward, we need to make a move here. And since the Raiders somehow acquired Jeremy Hill from Cincinnati, Latavius Murray should be available. So taking a quick look at his skill set, he's got 92 speed, 94 acceleration, 87 carrying, 85 trucking, 85 stiff arm. I'm liking everything about this player. He should definitely be an impact type of guy. So we're going to go on ahead and make this deal happen with the Raiders. We had to give up a little bit as far as draft picks go in the future. We gave him a third and fifth rounder next year. Plus, we tossed in Brooks Reed, a player who could pretty much never crack the rotation anyways. So we're not going to miss much there. In terms of what we're getting back, we're getting a sixth round pick next year and Latavius Murray. And I think that's a really good steal if you ask me. That third round pick, maybe we can end up working something out to where we can get another third rounder next year. But I'm not too worried about it. I think it's a really good deal. What do you guys think about it. Make sure you drop me a comment below and let me know what you guys think. So after pulling off one of the best deals, I think, as my time as a Falcons GM, I was so hyped, I was ready to go. I was going to hop into the very next game and just let Latavius Murray run crazy all over the Carolina Panthers. So I advanced it to week six, and I just so happened to scroll over and check my depth chart. And to my surprise, Latavius Murray is nowhere to be found on the roster. So I do a little bit of investigating here, scroll down and check the injury report just to see what's going on. And somehow through osmosis or something, Latavius now has a torn pec muscle and he's going to miss 33 weeks 33 weeks you guys are you kidding me what just happened i'm i completely just lost my mind at this point for the life of me somebody please explain to me what just happened is madden doing some like behind the scenes simulation or something to where guys can get hurt for doing nothing or are they trying to make it to where guys get hurt off the field kind of like they do in real life maybe in the weight room or at home or something or did i just get trolled by some random simulation ai glitch Either case, somebody let me know what's going on because I'm a little annoyed by that. As soon as I make the trade, the guy gets injured. So anyway, we got to pick up somebody new now. And I am not making another trade, giving up any more draft picks. We're just going to pick up Denard Robinson from the waiver wire and we're just going to strap him up and play and see what happens. Now, getting into the gameplay, coming out first and 10, dumping it short to Robinson in the backfield. He's able to pick up enough yardage for a first down. Bringing up first and 10, we pitch it to him off the right side. Again, Denard Robinson picking up some pretty decent yardage early on 
on in this one, you guys. That pickup right there was for about a gain of five or six. Bringing up second down now, Matt Ryan throwing a dart to Hooper right there down the seam, picking up 15 yards on the play. First and 10 now, going play action. Matt Ryan looking downfield, connecting with the wide open Josh Gordon in the middle of the field. He makes the grab there and puts us in goal to goal territory. On first and goal, we pitch it off the left side and Robinson goes nowhere. He gets tackled by Thomas Davis on the play. Now look at what Madden does to me, you guys. You see this? For some reason, they felt it necessary to show me all the guys that are inactive due to injury as if I didn't know. This game is crazy. So on third and goal here, Matt Ryan takes a quick three-step drop and fires a slant to Julio, and he's able to come down with it for the score. And Matt just barely got rid of that when the linebacker was applying pressure. Matt just had to get rid of it, and he ended up paying a price for hanging in there, but Julio was able to go up and make the grab, and just like that, we go up 7-0. Now on the Panthers' next possession, they come out trying to work the ground game, but there is no running room there. Bringing up a second and 10, Newton dropping back, connected with Brown down the middle of the field, setting them up with the first down again going to the ground game and it's not working early in this one the Falcons run defense is all over it looking at second and eight now the handoff to the running back actually loses a couple of yards on the play setting them back to a third and ten now then Cam in the shotgun taking the snap looking downfield having tons of time in the pocket trips over his own running back gets back up looks downfield and flicks it 70 yards downfield for a touchdown now did anybody notice anything strange about that play no how about my defensive back just standing there with his back turned watching Kelvin Benjamin make the catch? The entire time. Now I use or control him at this point and I'm pressing Y and my DB doesn't even move. That was a crazy play right there. Anyway though, on the Panthers next drive, they get the ball all the way back down to the red zone. On second and three here, they hand the ball off and we are all over that play. Devondre Campbell's right there to make the tackle. Setting up third and two, Cam throws a touchdown to Olsen, but there's a flag on the play. It is a holding penalty and they're back in this one all the way up setting them up with a third and 12 so Cam is back in the shotgun taking the snap looking downfield fires a pass to Olsen is completed but Olsen is out of bounds the pass is incomplete we end up doing a great job on defense holding their offense to three point try and they end up knocking in the field goal so how do we do in our next possession we dump the ball off to Julio on the slant he makes a defender miss turns on the Jets and he is gone that's exactly the way that we wanted to respond with a quick strike score in hostile territory. But I ended up missing the point after try, ended up pushing it wide left. So the score in this one is 13 to 10. Next drive for the Panthers, Cam Newton is sacked. Devondre Campbell getting to Cam Newton for his first sack of the game. And look at Campbell work, beating the tackle and driving Cam Newton all the way into the turf. That's exactly the way that we want to be physical out here in this one. So on second and 17 now, they end up getting a good chunk of that yardage back right there, setting them up with the third and two. Cam Newton in the gun, dumping it short to his running back for the first down and a couple more yards on top of that. They end up moving the chains on that one, setting them up with the first and 10, trying to get the ground game going, but there is no running room at all in that play. Good job by the Falcons defense. On second and 10 now, Cam going play action. He's under pressure and he's forced to scramble, but still looking downfield, getting rid of it, but throws it incomplete. Olsen was there, but he could not get it to him. So it sets up a third and 10 now and the pressure forces Cam to get rid of it. So we end up taking over after the three and out. We go with the ground game, handing the ball off to Robinson. He picks up about seven before being pushed out of bounds, but look at what happens, you guys. Another running back goes down with an injury. So since we've got no running backs on the next play, we try to go to Gordon, but he drops the ball. The timing on that pass was perfect, but Gordon was unable to reel it in. And the Panthers defense does a good job of forcing us to go three and out. So on the Panthers next drive here from the 24 yard line, they hand the ball off to Artis Payne. He hits the spin move, makes a guy miss and ends up picking up nine on the play. Setting up second and one now, Newton in the gun, dumps it off quick to his tight end Olsen. He makes the catch and runs in untouched for the score. And that was a completely busted coverage by the Falcons secondary. So how do we respond on our next possession? Matt Ryan gets sacked after the play action. Without a legit running threat, there's no need for the players on defense to bite on play action. But a couple plays later on third and long, Matt Ryan fires a pass to Julio Jones. He breaks a tackle and he is taking it all the way to the house. What an effort by Jones on the play. 
Now let me show you guys really quick why that play worked. It was all about the right play calling, not sliders, not difficulty settings, or any other fabrication that some of you guys try to cook up. The call on defense was Buck Slant Show 2, which is a three deep zone blitz, which means these two guys right here are blitzing and everybody else has their individual zone assignment. The outside corners and the free safety give you a three deep shell. Now, the reason this play works is because of the route combination on the left side of the field and this corner right here. As we start to run it, pay close attention to what the corner does. Instead of playing his deep responsibility like I showed you a second ago, he tries to jump the underneath route, which leaves Julio with the one-on-one -on -one with the free safety, and all he has to do then is just make the catch and break a tackle, and he's gone. Sometimes you just have a better play call. That's all it is, you guys. So on the next Panther drive, they hand it off, and Artist Payne hits a disgusting spin move that gets him into the open field to the 20 15 to 10 and he gets tackled at the seven yard line but our defense does a good job at holding them out the end zone and they're forced to settle for three and now we're looking at a tie ball game later in the quarter though with 34 seconds to go cam in the gun looking downfield slings it over to brown and he's wide open walking into the end zone right there and that was another blown coverage by our secondary we have to get that tightened up moving forward now we've got a little bit of time to see if we can answer back before the half ends with 22 seconds to go Matt Ryan throws deep into the middle of the field. Julio goes up and gets it, and we call a timeout, stopping the clock with 13 seconds to go. Next play, first and 10, Matt Ryan again driving the ball downfield. This time it's Miller with the grab, and Dan Quinn immediately hops in and calls a timeout. With five seconds to go, Matt Ryan sends Julio Jones in motion and then makes a quick adjustment at the line of scrimmage, making a line check, and then does a hot route to Hooper on the seam route. Ryan then takes the snap and goes up top to Austin Hooper, and he's able to come down with it in traffic over Luke Keekley. So we're tied in this one 27 all. On my next offensive possession, Matt Ryan escaping the pocket, connecting with Julio Jones near the sideline for a nice game. A couple plays later, Ryan dropping back again, going up top. This time is Josh Gordon going up and grabbing that one, and he's able to come down with it against the one-on-one -on -one coverage for the touchdown. So now the score is 34-27 in this one. How did the Panthers respond? With the quick strike right there to Benjamin, bringing up a second and three. Newton dumped and it's short to Funches across the middle who's able to make the grab and then pick up some nice yardage on top of it. Bringing up a first and 10 now. Newton with the QB keeper trying to get downfield and is able to pick up about 12 yards on the play and we've got another injury timeout on the field. This time it's Sherrod Westmerlin, our star cornerback that we acquired a couple of weeks ago and that is a huge blow to our secondary who really hasn't been playing that well in this one. So Sherrod goes out with a hit pointer and does not return in this game. So after the tackle for a loss by B Beasley, the Panthers are looking at third and six. Newton in the gun, has time in the pocket, scrambles. Beasley gets there but gets shaken off by Cam, who then throws downfield and connects with Bunches wide open in the middle of the field. And that sets them up in goal-to-goal -goal territory. So on first and goal, they come out with the handoff. Artist Payne spins off a Falcons defender and walks in for the score. And that last play by Cam was just unbelievable. I can't tell you how many times he's done that over the last couple of seasons. But the next play, we come right back, connecting with Gordon on the post route and he takes it all the way to the house and then he just dives into the end zone there to put the finishing touches on the score so moving things to the fourth quarter now we got the same score 41 34 it's two minutes and 10 seconds to go cam newton in the gun spread receiver set taking the snap dumping it off quick to artist pain makes a guy miss with that spin move that has been a lethal move all game long next play they come back with the handoff and we make the tackle but there's a flag on the play this is going to be a face mask penalty that's going to give the panthers even more yardage after the play so a couple plays later here on third and four newton in the gun he's under pressure and he's taken down by the rookie dorsett what a huge sack this late in the game the panthers then rush everybody back to the line newton in the gun again he's under pressure this time is claiborne forcing the sack fumble dominic easley is right there for the recovery and look at the play by claiborne right there shedding the block getting to the quarterback right as he releases it and we're able to recover it and all we got to do now is just come out and take a knee and we are finally able to beat the Carolina Panthers in the regular season this is the first time in two seasons you guys what a crazy game anyways as always I appreciate you all for tuning in I know this video ran kind of long but I hope you guys enjoyed it nonetheless don't forget to like share comment and subscribe I'm signing off and I'll see you in the next one